Hello, it is September 17th, and this is our community call for Kelly Heimbach, Polly Breithaupt, and Alex Cowell's teams. We are going over the top 10 habits of the most successful people for business and life. Before we get started on the call content, Kelly is going to go over our housekeeping, and I'm gonna mute everybody, except Kelly. Maybe. All right. Hello. Um, all right, so we wanted to go over um, a couple things that were going on. First, there are sip and samples that corporate is running, and it's going to be the Isogen Zoom link, and Monday and Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we heard that there might be a free gift, so. Monday and Wednesday. Monday, Monday and Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, sorry. Monday and Wednesday. Great. Not <laughs> Monday and Wednesday. Um, so that's exciting. Um, so check that out. We're thinking free enrollment. We're thinking, but we just know it's a free gift. So, um, championship challenge. Um, this week's prize is for the first 100 people that enroll three, you will get a $100, um, certificate to icy gear. So that is really exciting. Yeah. So, um, and we just wanted to kind of recap um, Fit Happens. I think everybody on here is in the group and it's going really, really well. We have almost a thousand people in the group. Um, you can still add them. So um, of course we're not putting that out on our, our timelines or anything because we <laughs> want to create that sense of urgency. But as you're enrolling people, you can still add them to the group. Um, we're going to start a plank challenge um, tomorrow. Um, we are, we'll continue with our fitness um, Friday. We will, Polly's going to do a meatless Monday, um, Facebook live tomorrow and just tell us a little about her vegan journey. Well, and, I don't think I'm doing a Facebook live tomorrow. I did one tonight. Oh, you did one tonight. Okay. Yeah. I might. I kind of said I might, but I'm doing a recipe tomorrow. Okay. Your, your favorite one, Kelly. <gasps> Yay. Um, and we'll be, we'll be in there. There's daily posts every day. And um, it's been awesome so far. There's been a ton of engagement and um, we're getting fabulous feedback. So um, we can't wait. There's, we have lots more in store. Um, so just stay tuned. And um, yeah, it's really, it's been awesome so far. Um, make sure, I know that you're on the Isobody Challenge because you wouldn't be in the group if you weren't. Um, but just really make sure that you're encouraging all of your, um, your new people to get started right away because it's a no brainer. I mean, who doesn't want $200 in free products? Like it's, it's a no brainer. And, um, and also the healthy mind and body, um, make sure that if you're not in that, get in that, but encourage your people, especially anyone that's struggling. Um, mindset is, such a huge, huge part of being successful in life in general. But, you know, if you have team members that have hit a plateau or they're just struggling in any areas, healthy mind and body will help them tremendously. So, um, you know, let's just make sure. And plus, um, as you all know, you get points for that as well for the championship challenge. So, um, all right. Um, so I'm going to start. As Alex said, the – Topic for tonight is the top 10 habits of the most successful people for life and business. So um, people will say all the time, um, you know, how do you do it and blah, 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 all these things. And, um, you know, if you know me, I do not have my shit together, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm working on it. And the one thing um, and the kind of the thing that sparked this was making your bed in the morning. So if you know me, you know that this is something near and dear to my heart. Um, I have been making my bed since as long as I can remember. And it totally sets the tone for the day. There's, if you haven't seen this video and, and I will tell you that I have seen this video shared at not just, um, you know, network marketing things. Um, it was the we I watched it at one of Luke's wrestling banquets, um, and I'm I'm gonna post it probably post it tomorrow in the morning, <laughs> um, but it's this um, 
military man that gives an awesome speech and just, it sets the tone for the day. Um, you know, even if you didn't have a great day when you come home and your bed's made, I mean, it, it just, it really, it gets you moving and it instills a habit. And, you know, once you get in the habit of things, then you will be more successful in everything. So if you're not making your bed, that's something that I challenge you to, to start doing moving forward um, and make your bed every single morning. Just okay. Just can, who, does, who, show of hands, who makes their bed every single morning? Okay. No, it's good. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, I'm glad you're being honest. I Wait, one know. side of my bed gets made because Ken, Ken makes his. There you go. Um, so I, um, I started doing this like three months ago. My husband would be the first one out of bed in the morning and then I would be the second one and I would just leave it and I wouldn't make it because I was just always too busy, too busy, too busy, you know, and I started doing it about three months ago. And I was sharing with Kelly earlier today, I said, and when we were just kind of finalizing our top 10 habits, and we both agreed that this should be number one. And mm -hmm. Kelly has shared with me many times how she's been doing this for years. And I said, you know, I started doing it a couple months ago. And I've really found that, you know, especially when you work from home, but even when you come in after the end of a very long day, and you're stressed, and you have to get dinner, or if you've got kids, you're trying to like, you know, keep them quiet and not kill them. And, you know, and you know, it's really amazing to walk into your bedroom. And especially if you're somebody who has a messy bedroom, seeing that, that one piece of orderly furniture that just, just like, it's so welcoming. It's like, it wants to give you a hug. And so anyhow, if you don't make your bed, please do that. <laughs> that's okay, Marina. If Tom makes your bed, it's, it, the bed is made. So that's, that's, all that's that you know, and you know, you know how that, that saying that a messy desk is the sign of an organized mind. And that's, it's just, that's total BS. It's not true at all. Like you, you need to have some orderliness. Although I will say my desk is always a mess. And I think there's some sense of order in my brain, but anyhow. Okay, so number two in our top 10 is to get up one hour earlier, okay? There is a 25th hour in the day. You've just been sleeping through it. So getting up an hour earlier is going to take time to adjust to, but once you make it a habit, you're never going to look back. I promise you this, promise, promise, promise. Last July, I started waking up probably three hours earlier than I was normal to go to 5 a.m. boot camp, and I thought I was going to die for the first three or four weeks, like literally die. Um, and now, fast forward a year, and I don't go to 5 a.m. boot camp as often because I go into the gym a lot, but I am naturally waking up between 4.30 and 5 every single day, and I'm so grateful for that because the, you know, that 25th hour, that 25th hour that I get in my day is, is amazing, and so, and actually I get almost 25 and 26 hours because I usually get two extra hours in the morning. So research has shown that not only are early risers more optimistic and conscientious, they also anticipate problems and minimize them more efficiently, which of course is crucial to success in the business world. This is where I like to plan out my work schedule and meals for the day too. Some people on, on Sundays will do all of their meal planning for the week. I tend to plan things daily. Um, I grocery shop usually weekly, but uh, I, I will think, okay, what am I making tonight? And usually by seven or eight o'clock in the morning, I've either taken something out to defrost or I've made a small list of things to get on the way back from dropping my kids off at school. So I know what dinner's going to be by like nine o'clock in the morning. And I work from home. People who work outside the home, this is something you might want to do the night before or the morning before when you're waking up an hour earlier. So kind of as a part two to that, one of the things that getting that 25th hour in your day um, is going to help you do is write a list of your tasks for the day. And I'm going to give you something even more, um, more of a pain point for you, which is take your biggest task for the day and nail it first. Okay. Get rid of that, that big task first that you don't want to do, okay? That, because what will happen is you will do all the fun things. You will do the tasks that you know don't take you as long. And, you know, if you follow, um, if you ever follow like Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, one of the things he says is list all of your debts and, and pay off the smallest 
to the largest. This is the opposite. You want to take the task and nail, like Kelly's showing you, eat that frog. Get the hard stuff out of the way first because as your day goes on, you get more tired, you get lazier, you get more complacent, and you will not get that bigger task done. And guess what happens? It goes on your list the next day. And then eventually, you might not ever do it because you're so sick of looking it on your task list. So anyhow, you will have a sense of relief. Imagine that. If, imagine by 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, you can say to yourself, I've completed the biggest task on my list today. Then the rest of the day is smooth sailing. Makes it even easier to get up early the next day. So on to you to number three, Kelly. All right. So number three is visualize. So in the, in the wee hours of the morning when you're doing all these things, um, it, I... I just love the quiet because it doesn't really happen very often. So um, another reason why it's nice to get up early before everybody is awake, but take that time to just breathe and to, um, you know, take time for, for gratitude. I have my gratitude journals right next to me. Um, but something else that, that we learned at the Rod Harrison training last weekend is to um, just jot down your vision every day. And it doesn't have to be complete sentences, just like your gratitude journal. I mean, it, it's, it's just write it down, um, you know, write down what you're shooting for. And, you know, when, when your goals and your gratitude, when you're writing that down and it's, it's in front of you all the time, you're, you're going to be much more apt to hit them rather than if, you know, they're just in your head and sometimes you think about them. Um, it's really important. If you can't see yourself as successful, you won't be successful. Um, it's as simple as that. So take, you know, take those couple minutes, um, you know, in the morning and write down what you're grateful for. Jot down a couple visions, the things that, that you're shooting for, and just take a minute to just sit in the quiet and, um, you know, think about the day and, before all the craziness, uh, it comes in. You're up. I'm up. Okay, number four. <laughs> you knew this was probably coming. Eat well <laughs> and plan for the day. It sounds so simple, and we talk all the time about the convenience of our products, but do you actually follow that? Do you practice what you preach? You know, of course, we want to start our day off with an isolene shake, and, you know, some people, um, I actually tend to sometimes do, I'll do half a shake, with like an egg and some turkey bacon or something. And then I'll have another half shake. Like I'll kind of like mix up the order of things, but I have learned that getting a good solid foundation for my nutrition early in the morning is really, really, really important. Um, and kind of, again, as a part two to that, if you work at a desk, if you work in a classroom, if you sit, you know, I sit at my desk all day long, but if I've got like Mondays, Kelly and I were just discussing, Mondays are insane. We have like back to back call, 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 call. So one of the things that I have learned on Monday mornings, which are my crazy day of the week for calls, is I pack two to three snacks, like in a Ziploc bag or something or on a plate, and I bring them up and I keep them at my desk. Because I'll forget to eat, and before I know it, five or six hours has gone by, and I haven't remembered to eat, and I'm hungry, or I'm hangry, um, or it's time for a shake, or I'm trying to like shove anything I can into my mouth. And that's not the purpose of good quality nutrition. So you want to make sure that you have your snacks within grabbing distance at any time. Um, you know, whether you sit at a desk or in a cubicle or you're out all day, take that time the night before or in the morning if you can and make sure that you've got your snacks. So I think we remember the meals, but I think we tend to forget the snacks sometimes. So get those snacks and make sure that you are, you know, feeding your body every two to three hours. That's a really key critical thing for your metabolism is feeding that body every few hours because what we don't want is we don't want our body getting used to not eating because what does it do? It holds on to calories, whether you're skinny, whether you're overweight, whatever, your, our bodies all act the same way when it's not fed. Okay, it goes into starvation mode. So make sure that you, um, you're feeding yourself every two to three hours. You're up. All right, number five is get moving. So um, morning workouts give you an, a boost of energy. It's just a great way to get your day started. And um, a couple years ago, if you would have told me that I would be working out at 5 a.m., I would have laughed in your face for a really long time. Uh, but... I know with the craziness of my day, 
that if I don't get it done first thing in the morning, it's just, it just doesn't happen for me. So, um, my alarm currently is set for 4.15 and I work out at 5 a.m. And, um, you know, it's thinking about it. It's not, it's not always easy, but once, you know, um, once I'm done my workout, I always feel amazing. Um, and you know, and even here's the thing, let's just move in some way. So, you know, if you can't get out of bed first thing in the morning to do it, um, just make sure you're moving throughout the day at some point. I mean, going for a walk, um, there's all kinds of apps online. There's even, there's an app where you can get a five minute workout. It's called hot five fitness. So, um, you know, I, I, I suggest you multiply that by four and get at least get 20 minutes, but um, <laughs> just just move in some capacity if you're not doing anything right now and then work your way up. Um, fitness was never a part of my life growing up. Um, I am I have like zero athletic ability that that is giving myself a pat on the back really. Um, but I realize now that it just, I, I feel so much better and, um, and it's, it's so awesome for me to be able to say it is a part of my life now and, um, and I love it. And my kids see both my husband and I working out and they're doing it. And, um, you know, that's really what's most important. So get moving. I'm so proud of you for doing that too. I remember a year ago when I was doing these boot camps and you were like, oh my gosh, I could never imagine. And now like you're doing them, you're working out even earlier than I am. So that's awesome. Okay, number six on the list is um, very simply, we're just going to tell you to toss it, toss out the clutter. Uh, and that is something that I am, um, my husband, we've been married for almost 15 years and he, um, he affectionately knows that I have other children in my house known as the piles. And I have piles everywhere. I have piles of folded laundry on my vanity. I have piles of medical books beside my desk because I love medical everything. I have piles of order forms and isogenics products. I have products of piles of, of shakes. I have piles of pillows and sheets. Like I just have piles and we're lucky that we have a big house that things can usually be pushed into closets. But listen, I once heard somebody say, if you don't use it in a year, get rid of it. And you know, I tried that once and I remember thinking, but but what if you wanted to look for it? What if you went looking for it on month 13 and you had just tossed it? Like that gives me a little bit of anxiety and not much gives me anxiety. But I have learned that if you haven't used it in, a, in an entire like round of seasons, like it's something for winter or it's something for spring, um, if you haven't used it, you're probably not going to. And my justification was always like, well, but I'm going to need it in 15 months and I'm going to have to buy it again. And what a waste of money. But you know what? You kind of address those things as they come up. The amount of weight off your shoulders that you feel in your life when you have a made bed, when you've gotten your exercise in for the day, when you've had a good day because you've eaten well, when you walk into your office or walk into your bedroom and you don't see piles, that is really symbolic of what's going on in your brain and how you feel in your soul. And so if there's something that you need to start with, I'm going to tell you right now, start with magazines, junk mail, and receipts. If you are one of those people that saves tons and tons of coupons with the intention that you're going to save money on them one day, but then you never do and they end up expiring, you find them like six months later, or if you get magazines in the mail and you put in a pile that you plan on reading, but you know, I have learned, I have, and I'll tell you a funny story. I have subscriptions to three magazines that I never signed up for. One is Red Book, one is Us Weekly, and one is like Family Fun or something. All fine magazines in there, right? But I have learned that when I read, I want to read stuff about personal development, business building, finances, whatever. Okay. So I have pretty much, when these things come into the mailbox, they go right into my recycling because they're not helping me. They're not pushing me forward in my life. They're not pushing me forward in my business. So sorry, publishing house that makes these three magazines that sends me them for free. Um, I'm not reading your magazines. So that was something that's, that was a decision that I made in my life. So think about something you could declutter. 
Um, you may find that like underneath your bathroom vanity, you have products from the 1970s. Well, not you, Carly and Katie, but everybody else probably does. Um, and you probably, you know, th there's no need to. What are you hanging on to those things for? Maybe you have kitchen appliances because you have this intention that one day you're going to be this amazing baker or you're going to make your own pasta. Like, are you really going to? Get rid of that stuff. Have a garage sale, give it to Salvation Army, give it to somebody who wants it. So toss the clutter, find something in your home. You probably have it unless you're crazy OCD and neat. I'm not one of those people and, and get rid of the clutter. You're up, Pinebog. Well, besides Carly and Katie being young, Carly is a complete OCD clean freak. So she doesn't have clutter even if she was old. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, oh my goodness. I need someone like that. I know. Um, all right. So number seven is go to bed early. So um, if you are getting up at 415, <laughs> like I am, going to bed early is really easy. Um, you know, but if you're not, just stop, turn off Netflix and just give your brain a break and get to bed because we all know that sleep is a crucial part of life. It's a crucial part of your success in your weight loss journey too. Um, and it's just, you know, we, we need sleep to function. So um, getting the proper amount of sleep is, is really important. And um, if you have a Fitbit, it tracks it for you. I don't have a Fitbit, I have an Apple Watch. But I did find this cool sleep thing today where like you can set your, um, like what time you want to go to bed and it's, it was really cool. So whatever you need to do, um, <laughs> to, to make sure you get to bed early, um, do it and just, you know, I am one of those people that I cannot get three or four hours of sleep. Like you wouldn't want to be around me if that happened. So I need, a, I need seven. <laughs> and, um, I know that, you know, if, in order for me to be able to get up at 4.15, I have to get to bed early. Um, as Alex said, er said earlier, you know, if this is a new thing for you that you're getting up early, just be prepared that you're going to be ready for bed by about 4.30 for the first <laughs> few weeks. Um, it's, it's definitely an adjustment, but then your body adjusts to it and you're fine. So, um, you know, head to bed early and that's the first step to success. Yes. And you know, one of the things we want to remind you of is that these are these tips are actually a consolidation of tips that were taken from some of the most successful people in the world. So the top millionaires, CEOs, uh, business leaders, business trainers. Th this is a consolidation of of their tips. And you know what? One of the things that Kelly and I, we, when we were doing our research we were coming a lot across a lot of the same tips over and over and over. And it was, it was just a consistent theme. So this is just something that, you know, people do. If you saw Tony Robbins at celebration, you know, this past um, August, he talks about it as well. When he talks personally about the fact that he takes care of his body, his body's a temple and he eats well and he meditates and he, you know, takes the time to, to declutter his mind and to declutter his life. So these are things you're in good company if you do these things. So number eight, speaking of Tony Robbins, is educate yourself, okay? Whether it's reading books, whether it's listening to podcasts, um, I know Kelly's a big proponent of those things too and, and says as much to her team. Um, doing a little of this every day is important and I wanna stress, sitting down and saying, I'm gonna bang out three hours of podcasts is not an effective use of your time. You'll burn out, your eyes will start to roll into the back of your head and you'll hear nothing after about 30 to 40 minutes, okay? Your brain can retain about 20 minutes worth of information before it, it needs to stop and take a break and take a rest, okay? So um, the answer to that and a resounding trend is to take 10 or 15 minutes a day, schedule it in. It's in my calendar to listen to a podcast or to read a book. I really like podcasts and audiobooks. It just, I find, because I can usually do it while I'm doing something else. If I'm prepping dinner, if I'm having a shower, if I'm putting my makeup on, there is a podcast running. It's usually Susan Sly because I just love her style. And very rarely am I doing something in complete silence unless I'm trying to create something, you know, on my computer. But if I'm doing housework, I've got my headphones in and my, my phone is tucked into my pocket. 
if I'm doing my makeup, if I'm, you know, prepping kids lunches in the morning, my kids know they usually wake up in the morning and I have my phone propped up in a, in a soup bowl to amplify the sound on the counter and I'm listening to a podcast. So my carrots are very used to the sounds of Eric Warre and Susan Sly and um, Tony Robbins. You know, they're just, they just know these voices because it's always on, which I think is a really good thing too. It's a really good example to set for the rest of the family. So taking time to educate yourself is, and if you spend time going to the gym or going for walks, oh my goodness, that's key podcast time. Make sure that you're listening to that. Um, you're doing that as well. Great. Yes. All right. Um, Number nine is building positive relationships. So I'm sure that you have all heard that you are um, only as successful as the people that you associate with, that you're pretty much the sum of the five people that you hang out with. So make sure you're choosing wisely. Um, guys, you're here, <laughs> so you're already amongst some pretty awesome people, and, and that's huge um, because you – if you're surrounding yourself with negative people that are crabby and miserable and aren't pushing you forward, you're, you're going to become that as well. So um, plugging in to all of the amazing resources we have, these calls, um, if you have your, your championship team, um, local events, the core four isogenics events, um, you know, your church, any, any, um, group, any place that you can go where you can find some positive energy, that's really where you want to go. And I can absolutely say that, um, as you are growing in this journey, there's going to be people that are not, they don't want you to grow. They like the old miserable you that they can manipulate. And, um, you know, unfortunately I've, I've lost friends along the way. And, and, you know, there's some family members that I just, I have to match expectations. And, um, you know, I, I just, I know how much time I can spend and things like that, but it's, it's an important part of growing. And, um, you know, it's, you'll figure it out. And, um, it, the people that you're hanging around with, be, you know, I don't know about, I won't speak for anybody else, but some of my best friends now are, you know, people that are in the business because we can relate and we're on the same path and they're positive and they're pushing me forward. And, um, you know, it's just, it's really, really, really important. So positive all the way. Um, I was, I was, uh, I was thinking about that cause that just, that resonates with me so much. Um, you know, I want to, um, take a second and just, and just say that, um, if there are people that you follow on Facebook or that you're friends with on Facebook and they are either highly political against what you believe or, um, religious, political, whatever, but they have belief systems that are, are so, uh, so opposite from what you believe. Unfollow them. Do yourself a favor. You don't have to unfriend them. Sometimes it's good friends and family, but you don't even understand that looking at that day in and day out is toxin to your brain. Um, you know, I, um, I have unfollowed more people in the last year because I realized that I couldn't see this all day long. I couldn't be going through Facebook, looking for people to love on, um, you know, looking for my, you know, my mentors and inspirations posts and in between be peppered with all this negativity, you know, and people do use Facebook for that and that's their prerogative, but I've chosen to pull that out of my feed. And, you know, that's a really important thing. One of the things I do is when I hear a leader at Isogenics, that I really, really love. I go find their Facebook page and I follow them. And then I select under notifications, I select see first, not default. Because if I'm scrolling through in the first thing in the morning and I'm seeing inspirational quote from Trudy Maples, inspirational quote from Emily Vavra, inspirational quote from Cindy Walter, inspirational quote, quote from Zach Slobin, here's a video from Chris Harder about mindset. How do you think that's going to be different compared to somebody getting up on their soapbox, just bitching and moaning about the president or 
you know, the last election or what's going on in the Middle East or whatever. You know what? It really, it starts your day wrong. And you know what? If you haven't been on social media all night, you get on in the morning, you get all those posts that were posted after the time you went to bed. And remember, you're waking up at 4 a.m. So you're going to bed early. So there's lots of social media posts you have to catch up on now. Um, and so the best thing you can do is to pull that stuff out of your feed. Okay. And, and, and I really truly believe that that's important because you know how these people think you don't need it hitting you in the face every single day. So, um, sorry, Kelly, I'm, I'm going to go one more time and, and I'm going to share. Um, I had, um, a two PE of mine who was under my mom, who's my one PE and <laughs> she, <laughs> I, I realized this past summer that she had not only unfriended me, but she had blocked me. And I, I, I was like, oh, that's weird. And, and the only reason I knew was because I went to tag her in something to wish her a happy Canada day. And I couldn't, I couldn't tag her. I'm like, oh, I guess she's gone off Facebook. Well, <laughs> what happened was she had unfriended and blocked me. And you know, I, I texted my mom, couldn't figure out what was going on. So my mom, because my mom likes to get to the bottom of things, found out that she had, this woman had unfriended me because my feed was too positive. That she couldn't handle seeing Isogenics transformations because she had tried Isogenics and she wasn't successful with it. So rather than my feed inspiring her to get back on the wagon and inspiring her to do better, she had to just remove me from her life altogether. And it wasn't me, she was removing, it was positivity. It was other people's performance. It was other pe pe people's transformations. Um, so I didn't take it personally, but, um, you know, that's, she couldn't handle that. And, you know, you and your feed will be too much for some people to handle, you know, but those aren't your people. Those are not your people. Be thankful for those people that unfollow you and that remove your information from their feed because those are not your people anyways. Okay. So just be grateful when your friend list kind of whittles down a bit or your follower list whittles down a bit because those are the people that really want to see your stuff that really want to be there that are going to lift you up that are going to encourage you for being a network marketer encourage you for being a health coach so um sorry i, I was on a little bit of a soapbox there but um yeah. i've been i've been blocked too i think it's a sign of success yeah. for the exact same reason too positive <laughs> and i was like okay <laughs> can't handle that you got, you're too happy you need to be yeah. So anyhow, so that tells me I'm doing something right when someone blocks me. Right. So, exactly. Well, on that note, let's go to number 10 of our top 10 habits of successful people. And that is write your goals on paper and be strategic. Okay. Str strategic and strategy is a buzzword when you're making goals and whatnot. But I'm going to tell you something, you know, Kelly and I had talked about the content for tonight's call and we weren't going to do this, this topic. Uh, we were going to do something a little bit more abstract about mindset and goal and, 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 you know, just kind of positivity and going in the direction of your focus. And, but, you know, we talked about it. We were like, you know, we really felt like we needed to give you some very tangible strategies, some things that you could take and you could implement right now and that you could change in your life right now. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to tell you something, most self-made millionaires, they, they don't end up rich automatically. People in isogenics, they don't end up millionaires automatically. They, they make plans. They say, this is how many consultants I'm going to have at the end of this month. This is how many managers I'm going to promote this month. Susan Sly will tell you that her goal is to promote an executive every year. And there were two or three years where she got really sick because she has multiple sclerosis. She has neuropathy. And I think she went to like Africa or something and contracted some, some crazy illness and was like, down for the count for like a year recovery. And so on those years that she did not promote out an executive, you know what she said the following year? I guess I have to promote too. So, you know, it's not accidental that people are successful in this business or any business. You know, something I learned um, last week was write your vision out on a daily basis. Even if it's the same every day, like Kelly said, write it down every single day so that it's so ingrained in you so that you can regurgitate it like a 30 second commercial. So that if someone came up to you right now and said, what's your vision? And like, if you go up to Gene Coover and say, what's your vision? He'll be like, you know, to, to impact world health and to be bigger than Johnson and Johnson. 
like he'll say that and it rolls right off. And I've heard him say it so many times now. I know that's his vision. Eric Hoover will tell you it's to impact people, you know, physically and financially, you know, their, their health and their, their financial, their financial health and their physical health. So um, it doesn't have to be complete thoughts. You know, you don't have to write a, a dissertation and do all sorts of research and a five point paragraph, whatever, just, just jot it down. This is what I'm working towards. This is my vision. You know, keep it in front of you at all times. Put it on a sticky note. I love sticky notes. I'm a sticky noteaholic. Um, put it on a sticky note on your computer, on the wall behind you, whatever it takes. You know, there's a lot of distractions in this world. Social media, apps. How many of you have games on your phone? I don't want to see a show of hands because then I'll have to raise my hand because I have games on my phone. Um, messages, emails. You know, one of the things I think we talked about a few weeks ago was closing Facebook down. When you're working, close it down. And what I do is I check Facebook once an hour on the hour, every hour. And I'll, and I'll give myself like 10 minutes to go on, check, make sure I don't have messages and, you know, notifications. And then I go off of it for another hour. I have to shut Facebook off because if I see that little number in parentheses in my, um, in my tabs, oh, oh, I have to check. I have to check. It's like crazy fear of missing out. So I just have to shut it down completely. So shut those things down. Okay. Um, Erica Federoff, one of the things that she does and talks about is setting a timer and doing your tasks for 15 minutes. So even if you have a pile of dishes to tackle, even if you have tons of self-education to read, even if you've got tons of emails to get back to, 15 minutes at a time and move on to the next task. And when you've gotten through your whole task list for the day, go back and work on the things you didn't finish, okay? It will prevent overwhelm. Really, really important. And that's a strategy. That's how you're strategic with your time, okay? So um, on that note, I'm done. I think, um, Kelly, I don't know if you have any more to contribute. If anybody has any questions or comments, you know, we'll, we'll open up the floor now um, and, uh, and feel free to, to talk about that. We will post these 10 things so that you can go back and you can read them and you can print them off and, and use them as a blueprint for success for, for the next year and see how things really start to change for you by following these 10 steps. Um, the, the only other thing that I wanted to say was, um, you know, we, we, we did research and we found all this information, but what I thought was awesome was that we made our own list and almost every single thing that we wrote down ended up being part of this as well. So, um, I think that it's, you know, we may beat ourselves up at times, but you know, we're, we're works. We're all <laughs> a work in progress for sure. And, um, we have all the tools. It's just a matter of putting them into place and, and getting to work. It's true. Very true. So, so we're happy that you joined us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you everyone. We're getting everybody out in 45 minutes. So that's pretty good. Um, but we will post a recording for this and we will post the, the list, the bulleted list so that you can, um, you can have it taped to your desk. So when you declutter, don't take this one down. But, all right, guys, have, everybody have a great night. I'm gonna stop recording now.